Ladies and gentlemen, we now present George Edwards in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Sit down, Mr. Rutherson. Pray be seated. It isn't often we have visitors, is it, Hetty, my dear? Well, you won't be wanting me to help you entertain him. I think I'll go. Yes, it might be just as well. Some of the things that Mr. Utterson and I will have to talk about will be rather of a confidential nature. All right. You'll find me upstairs if you want me. And now, Mr. Utterson, perhaps you'll be good enough to tell me what it is that brought you down to my... my rather secluded residence. I came on behalf of my client, Mr. Randolph Winter. Ah, yes. The gentleman with the model housing scheme. I think I have given my reply in unmistakable terms to his proposals. I'll admit I was glad of an excuse to come down to your place. I wanted to see you. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. And the reason you wanted to see me was to try and ferret out what connection I had with Henry Jekyll. Wasn't that it? It was. You were wasting your time with Hetty. She knows no more about that than you do. Though the things she could have told you about Henry... <laughs> what do you mean? You want the full, unvarnished story of Henry Jekyll? Of course I do. Because you don't want him to marry your daughter, isn't that it? Never mind my reason. Isn't that it? Answer me! Yes. That's it, if you want to know. I want the truth. You want the truth from me? I demand it from you. Very well, then. I have never wanted my daughter to marry him. And if you put me in possession of sufficient evidence to make it impossible, I shall consider myself as being in your debt. <laughs> my debt? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That's good, that is. <laughs> well... Please, go on. This, this interview is painful, and I want to have done with it. First, we will finish with Hattie. As I was saying, he accidentally found her again. He was horrified to see what she'd become, and he took her away with him out of the place she worked in. He took her to the building at the back of his father's house. <laughs> he calls it his laboratory. What? He had a girl there. Oh, but only for a very brief time. Henry was entirely blameless on this occasion. Believing that the main house was deserted, he went into it to get food and clothes for his... his protege. It was about two o'clock in the morning, remember? And while he was groping his way in the dark, who should surprise him but his father? The old man had unexpectedly come up to London from his country house. Yes, yes, go on. Picture Henry's dilemma. There he was with Hetty waiting for him in the laboratory. And his father, asking what he was doing, wandering round the house like a thief at such an hour of the night. Henry made some sort of an excuse and went off to bed. Leaving the girl to shift for herself? Precisely. Hetty thought that he'd played another trick on her, so she ran away. An hour or so later, she was fished up out of the Thames by the water police from where she'd attempted to commit suicide. I... Uh, oh, you can't be serious. The girl that I've been talking to? The same. There's a lot more. But I won't go into details. Hetty was charged with vagrancy, sentenced to a term in prison, came out, became a professional thief, got a further prison sentence, and eventually arrived at her present situation, which is a uh, companion to my lighter moments. And this, this trail of misery is the work of Henry Jekyll? You'd never believe it to hear the way she lied for him, would you? Strange, submissive creatures women are. Well, I... I can only repeat that I'm indebted to you for what you've told me. I often felt that there was something about Henry that none of us knew of. But I never suspected this. Wait a minute. 
Wait a minute, that's not all. Surely there's no more. Oh, yes, much more. You were asking Hetty about David Markham, the unfortunate young boy who fell from the window. That was Henry's doing, too. What? Yes. He didn't push him from the top of the tower, but it was he who led him to do the things that got him expelled. They had a quarrel up there, and Markham lost his balance. That's the explanation of the accident. I wonder no one ever suspected it. But he was little more than a schoolboy then. Oh, curious. Ah, uh, but curiously old for his age. Didn't you once make that very remark to his father? How do you know these things? I told you Henry and I are twin souls. When you first said that, I thought you were joking. Uh, now you begin to think there may be some truth in it. And I'm not a very pleasant specimen for a man to claim affinity with, am I? At least you look what you are. And Henry, with his pale, fine face and sensitive manner, looks something of a saint. Two halves of a single whole, Mr. Utterson. You're talking riddles, but that's unimportant. Unimportant? You never made a greater mistake in all your life. It's the most important, the most vital statement you've ever heard, if you only knew it. I'm afraid I can't stay to discuss metaphysics with you now, Mr. Hyde. What you told me has been such a shock that I'll ask you to excuse me. So that you can go and break the news to Margaret and postpone the wedding once again? Or it won't be mere postponement this time, will it? After what you have told me, she will marry that man only over my dead body. Ah, that's precisely what she's going to do. She's going to marry him over your dead body. Why, what's the matter with you? Have you suddenly gone mad? Why have you shut the door? So that I can lock it. There. Now it's done. We're shut in here alone. Just you and I. Let me out. What sort of madness is this? I told you too much knowledge of a certain kind is dangerous, didn't I? Oh, no. You needn't go casting wild looks at the windows. The shutters are barred on the outside. I demand that you open that door and let me go. I've been waiting for this moment far too long. I've thought of it for years. I began to hate you, I think, when I was still a child. I hated the way you looked at me. Curiously, as though I was some sort of specimen impaled on a pin. You were wondering then what manner of creature I was. What are you talking about? When did I ever see you before the night you struck the child down in the street? And then when I heard you give your reasons why Margaret shouldn't marry me. Marry you? In heaven's name, what are you raving about? Haven't you realized? Don't you see who I am? I know that you're a maniac. But you don't know that I am Henry Jekyll. You're what? Henry Jekyll. Don't look at me like that. I know you're telling yourself that insane people are subject to delusions, but I am not insane. And then if you're not, stop this hideous fooling and let me out. I can see now I was a fool to believe anything you said. The whole thing is a pack of lies from beginning to end. And you're willing to regard it as such and do nothing to stop your daughter's wedding? I'll make inquiries, and if I find there's no truth in what you say... <laughs> You'll make no inquiries, my friend, because you're never going out of this room alive. I'm never going out of this room? No. Since I've found the way to protect myself into the form of Edward Hyde, I've done many nameless things, but I've never yet committed murder. I wanted to. I wondered how it felt. And now I'm going to find out. Stop this infernal nonsense. Open the door. I decided it should be you some time ago. I never thought you'd play so neatly into my hands as you've done by coming here. Let me out. I wondered when the opportunity would present itself. Stop following me about the room. Stop it, I say. Uh, you've knocked over one of the chairs. Are you frightened? Why should a man who's lived the blameless life that you have be afraid to meet his maker? Hide. Stop this. 
I've done nothing to you. Haven't you? If you hadn't kept Margaret away from me, Edward Hyde would have ceased to exist long ago. She would have made all the difference. Look on your work, O oh righteous man, and see what you've called forth out of the darkness of a human soul. You foul obscenity. Take my daughter's name off your lips. Your daughter is mine. Mine, I tell you. She's belonged to me ever since we were children. And it's you who have kept us apart. You won't do so anymore. I'll wipe out the existence as I'd smash any other barrier that stood between us. I'm not a young man, but I can still fight. If you won't let me out of this room of your own accord, by heaven, I'll lay you out and get the key that way. Ah, that's better. That's better. Now we've got some hate on both sides. I should say there was. From the first moment I saw you, I had an overwhelming desire to strangle you. You were the foulest, vilest, most repulsive creature I had ever set my eyes on. The world will be a better place to be rid of you. And God willing, I shall do it. <laughs> you will! <laughs> With my bare hands. Let me get them around your head and they throw kill me, would you? Take that! And that! And that! And that! And that. Go away, get back upstairs. All right, my dear, come in, come in. It might serve as a good object lesson to you. <laughs> Not a man to fall foul of. Oh, oh look at his head. Oh, you beast. You beast. Shut up, you little fool. I'll choke you too. That's right. Fate. Well, perhaps it's just as well. Now, let me get out of this. First the stick. I must destroy the stick I killed him with. Into the fire with it. Into the fire with it. That's 